And one of the things that I really am thankful about Ken Ham for is how he really fought to make them realize that no, actually this racism stuff is something that we need to do away with. Um, I started thinking a lot more about this in a lot of ways. And one of the things I really came to realize is that race really is a false theory of origins. And a couple things were really helpful to me on this. Um, it's really this idea that the separations between us really stretch very far into the ancient past, and they cause difference in us. And they're, they're, they're so remotely in the past that we have no responsibility for the differences, and that explains why things are different now. That's why it is such a powerful idea. When we look at things like the divide in St. Louis, if we ca- say it's because of race in this fundamental way, it actually absolves us of any responsibility. Um, one of the most helpful ways that I've found to think about this is to really contrast it um, with chimpanzees and bonobos. This is from Alan Templeton's work, who's at, Wash, uh, who's at Wash U, too. I'll just go through this really quickly, but one of the things that he points out is that, um, that there's actually multiple races of chimpanzees. And so each of these groups is kind of the lo- geographic location of where, where chimpanzees are, and except for the, the red one. That's actually a bonobos. <laughs> And, the, and you see a wonder about that divide right there. That's actually a river um, that sep- separates the chimpanzees uh, where the lions are too from the bonobos where there are no lions. And that's one of the reasons why there's some pretty strong differences between bonobos and chimpanzees. Chimpanzees got to be a lot tougher because they got to fend off the lions. <laughs> and the bonobos uh, can have a lot more food and it's a lot more plentiful and this leads to a bit more of a gregarious lifestyle. If you want to choose between a bonobo, being a bonobo and being a chimpanzee, you want to be a bonobo. Okay. Unless it's a world of chimpanzees, and I guess you want to be a chimpanzee. <laughs> One of the things, if you look at this genetically, it turns out that these guys have actually been separated for a very long time in the past, and they really are different, even these different races. And, and that's actually how it is for the vast majority of biological life on Earth. If you go um, actually fairly short differences, distances, you'll see different species arise. This is one of the things that's almost unique about humans, is that we are actually all the same species, <laughs> even though we look really different. Um, we're, we've just been locked um, in interbreeding across long distances for a very, very long time to the point that we really just have the same evolutionary fate. So there's this weird thing, like, you know, I'm not an expert in primates. I can't tell you which one of these is a bonobo and which one of these is a chimpanzee. They look really, really similar, but maybe if you're a chimpanzee, you know the difference, but it turns out they really do have, behave very differently. Um, and it is genetically oriented, and it has to do with long-term separation, and that really is what race is. It's this idea that there's something immutable about the essence of a chimpanzee. It's different than the essence of a bonobo, but that's just not how it is for humans. Most of the differences we see have nothing to do with that. When you start looking at how this is talked about, too, you find out that this is something that really starts to weave through theology, and one of the things that I started to notice was um, how these questions of origins really start to weave through the questions of race. This is J.T. Tremaine. He runs an organization called Civil Righteousness in St. Louis, where they've been really trying to create um, more of a Christian engagement on these questions of, of race. This is what he says, that every people group carries the, divine, the distinct stamp of divine DNA. I think that's a poetic statement. I don't think he's talking about genetics. Yet we're united in humanity through our shared origins in the first Adam, our shared redemption in the second, in the second Adam. It's a statement of like this old history of um, this old doctrine of monogenesis, which is part of how the church's voice on race was really formed in positive ways. But you see it happen in other places too. So this is Stephen Jay Gold. He writes in the, I mean, he didn't write. This is actually a talk he gave on race in the 80s, right after the discovery of mitochondrial Eve. He says that mitochondrial Eve makes us realize that human beings, despite our differences uh, in external appearance, really are members of the same single entity that's had a very recent origin in one place. There's a kind of biological brotherhood that's more profound than we ever realized. Now, he's right about a lot of things. We are actually really connected to one another much more deeply than we think. But is like 100,000 years ago really that recent? (laughs) And it turns out mitochondrial Eve doesn't actually tell us that we're that connected. What he's actually happening, though, in this, he's taking a scientific concept that has nothing to do (laughs) with the theological concept of monogenesis. This is a scientist who's an atheist appealing to monogenesis in his argument against race. Isn't that interesting? And so what we find out, really, is that 
raises both in science and theology. One of the best books that I read recently was by David Unando. Are you here, David? Where are you? Yeah, there you are. I really recommend you to go buy this out of print book. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, so David is a, or Dave is a, um, is a scientist, but there's a history here in the science and the theology that's really helpful. I just have two more slides and, and we'll kind of end there. I gotta say that it comes up in other ways too. So Ken Ham is a guy that I disagree with about many things. One of the things that he says about race <laughs> is that um, there is no such thing as racial, interracial marriage, because we're all one race. Um, you know, one of the things I learned as I looked at history is how much fundamentalism was caught up in segregation. They said that segregation was scriptural. And one of the things that I really am thankful about Ken Ham for is how he really fought to make them realize that, no, actually this racism stuff is something that we need to do away with. When I say that it's really connected to, the, to this, um, you know, it's funny, they both appealed to, to Acts 1726. Bob Jones, um, in 1960, in his Easter address, was really disturbed by um, Billy Graham in South Africa wanting to have an integrated stadium to preach the gospel to. And so in response to that, he, he, uh, he gave a sermon called The Segregation Scriptural, <laughs> where he basically argued that um, what it says right here, it says that Paul says that God had made out of one blood all nations of men, but he also fixed the bounds of their habitation. And when nations break out of their boundaries and begin to do things contrary to the purpose of God and the directive will of God, they have trouble. And one of the things that he's talking about, he's talking about integration, he's talking about interracial marriage, and he explicitly talks about immigration. So immigration, integration, and interracial marriage, or mistigation as they called it. What a weird word, mistigation. And so when I look at this city, I realize that this is not something that's caused by, um, this divide is not something that can be traced back to genetics in Africa. 